Good morning. I'm Pastor Sean. Today is Tuesday, January 19th, and this is your morning prayer to start your day. So let us begin. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. Our text for today is Romans 9, verses 1 through 18. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience bears me witness in the Holy Spirit, that I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, my kinsmen according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from their race according to the flesh is the Christ who is God over all, blessed forever. Amen. But it is not as though the word of God has failed. For not all who are descended from Israel belong to Israel. And not all are children of Abraham, because they are his offspring. But through Isaac shall your offspring be named. This means it is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as offspring. For this is what the promise said, About this time next year I will return, and Sarah will have a son. And not only so, but also when Rebekah had conceived children by one man, our forefather Isaac, though they were not yet born and had done nothing either good or bad, in order that God's purpose of election might continue, not because of works, but because of his call, she was told the older will serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. What shall we say then? Is there injustice on God's part? By no means. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. So then it depends not on human will or exertion, but on God who has mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, For this very purpose I have raised you up, that I might show my power in you, and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. So then he has mercy on whomever he wills, and he hardens whomever he wills. In many and various ways God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now in these last days he's spoken to us by his Son. All right, so um, for for a large portion of this, uh, Paul is is you know saying how he he wishes you know he, he's he's in anguish for his his Israelite brothers, his fellow Jews, because you know they they have the patriarchs, they have the prophets, they have the scriptures, they have they have everything. God has delivered everything to them and even promised them Jesus, but they have not embraced him. They have not uh, taken Jesus as uh, you know as as what he says he is the the, the Messiah, and so um, you know he says my my heart breaks for them, you know I I wish I could you know I, I wish I could I I myself were accursed and cut off for their sake you know this is how badly I want them to be saved, and the, so he, he he turns then and says you know this is not a failure on God's part though. This is not God's failure. It's not you know like oh well they they don't they didn't uh, believe in Jesus therefore God has failed. It, it's it's not doesn't work that way, um, because it's God's mercy falls on the faithful those who believe in the promise. It has nothing to do with the the bloodlines, which is what he's he's going with here. Uh, so that's kind of the the main argument. Today, though, um, you know, it kind of jumped up at me, and and I, I mean, it just kind of. For for whatever reason, this is what um, this is what uh, what kind of stands out and has kind of hit me today is where um, you know in, in verse fifteen, for he says to Moses, "I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion." And it's such a um, I mean, this is God's this is God saying like, like, "Look, I'm going to do what I'm going to do." Okay, I am God. 
I have mercy on those whom I have mercy. I have compassion on those whom I have compassion. You cannot, you cannot question this. There's nothing you can say against this because I am God. You know, I'm God and you're not. <laughs> and this is what I'm going to do. And so it's a very kind of like, it's, it's not harsh, but I mean, it's a strong kind of thing where God is saying like, this is how it's going to be. And just the beautiful thing about that is that, you know, through faith in Jesus Christ, you know, God looks on us and says, I am having mercy on you. I am having compassion on you. And that's just the way it's going to be. And it's just such a wonderful thing to hear. <laughs> kind of this, like a very stern blessing uh, is kind of how I hear this. Um, and I, I think that's, that's actually kind of a fun way to, to hear it. Like uh, God is, is looking at everything going on in the world and everything that we, you know, that's just causing us stress and anxiety and is causing us so much pain in this life right now. And he's, he's just kind of perturbed by it all and, and just kind of like, well, ah, don't you know that I'm having mercy on you? Don't you know that I have compassion on you and that I'm blessing you? And I just, I love that kind of like God himself is, is just like, ah, this stuff, all this other stuff that's going on. You know what? I've chosen you to have my mercy. I've chosen you to, to, for, for my compassion to fall upon. Um, and we know he, he does because he's given us Jesus Christ. And that is his mercy. That is his compassion, that he, he sends his son to us, that he creates the faith that clings to uh, his son. And it's just such a wonderful thing to remember that, you know, in the face of everything that's going on in the world, in, in our country, in our state, in our lives, everything, um, in all of this, God sends mercy upon us. You know, we, we might not always feel it. We might always feel assaulted by so many things. And yet, God looks right down at you and says, I have mercy on you. You know, you have my grace. You have my blessing. You have my compassion. I see you and I know what you're going through and I am saving you. And I have sent my son to be your comfort and hope and your peace and all this. And it's just such a wonderful, wonderful thing. And it's just something that we we so badly need to hear right now. I mean, we need to hear it all the time. I mean, duh. But uh, just considering everything going on, and and not even on the uh, on a grand scale like the the nation and just all the political stuff. But I mean, just just in our own little, you know, in in our church here, you know, how there are people suffering, how there are people, uh, you know, in the hospital. You know, we, we've been praying for so many people. And, you know, this morning I, I, I'm, you know, heavy on my heart is, is, um, is uh, Don Maynard, you know, who's, uh, is, is improving in the hospital, but it's going to be a slow process. And, and, and just like, oh, Lord have mercy. And I think of uh, Roy Schrader, you know, I've been praying for him a lot. He's, um, you know, he's, he's had some health issues and, and so, um, you know, I've been praying on, praying for him a great deal, and it's just, it's like, oh man, what, what are we gonna do? You know, it's just like there's, there's so much going on, and yet here's God saying, I'm having mercy on them, I'm having mercy on you. You know, I'm sending my Son to minister to you all, to bring you peace, and that's, that's awesome. That, that sets me at peace with things. And, uh, and I know that he's, he hears my prayers for them. He hears all of our prayers for all the people in our hearts. And, and he, he is showing them compassion and because he is with them, he is bearing them up through whatever they're going through. And so that's, ah, that's good stuff. All right. <laughs> well, let us pray. Oh Lord, our heavenly father, almighty and everlasting God, you safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for joining me today. I hope this is a blessing to you. I hope this uh, gives you that much-needed comfort and hope um, in God's mercy and compassion that are for you. So, peace be with you. Have a blessed day.